Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. I have a removal of a yellow jacket's nest from inside the wall at somebody's house. Brought the nest home, fed it to my chickens, and fed it to my squirrel. Here's the video, check it out. All right, so this is a German yellow jacket nest. This is pretty much end season. Most of what you're seeing here are new queens and males. Uh, people ask me a lot in the comments as to what, how can you tell the difference between a new queen and a male because males are large just like new queens. Um, typically males are more slender, longer, and they have um, solid, thin, long black antenna. Um, the queens are usually a little bit more robust. Yeah, they're about the same length, um, but they have a one less abdominal segment and their antenna aren't quite as long. They're more like stocky and short and black. So I had to locate where this nest was. It was raining outside. It was throwing off what I could hear in the wall. And when I did bore in through the drywall, I could only see um, the styrofoam insulation board behind there. Unbeknownst to me, there was another um, paneling wall right behind that insulation. So after about an hour of trying to figure out what was behind this wall without uh, damaging structure and all that, um, I did it on able to cut through and found the nest in the smaller hole to the right of the bottom of that hole and then cut out a bigger hole to be able to access the actual nest. This nest was huge. It was a good sized nest um, for this particular species for a single season. So this nest started in May and, um, and got to the point where it's at within about five months, four to five months. You see it? Wow. It's big. <laughs> That's what she said. It's great the homeowner's watching. <laughs> I think there's more than three layers. Oh yeah, it goes up probably to the ceiling. I'm gonna try to get it out that way though. I'm gonna I don't wanna cut any bigger. So this was in kind of like a sunroom, or she called it a washroom, and there were um, French doors that separated this from the living space. So she was actually watching from those doors, which was awesome. So you can see here, this was a very active nest. There was a lot of adults in here. There were a lot of new queens and new males. Very, very active. Let's see how big it is. There's a bunch of queens in here. There's a queen there. That's not the queen, that's a queen. Queen there. This is a queen. This is a queen. Let's get this thing out piece by piece. All right, so first thing, I'd just like to take out a lot of the envelope. Um, get as much of that out as I can. Um, you'll notice here I have two cameras up. I have my 4K camera um, stationary on the tripod, and then I'm using my new Note 10 Plus um, Samsung phone set at three or at 4K um, at 60 frames a second to get the close-up videos with my flashlight. Um, I'm really, really happy with that phone. So that's kind of why you're noticing a little bit of the, uh, not so much shakiness, but just movement while I'm getting those in the wall shots. Um, I was able to get a lot more vivid shots with that up close than what I could taking the camera off the tripod. Um, so once I get the envelope cleared, I can kind of get a better idea as to how much comb there is to get out. And uh, reaching into a hole like that is very, very unnerving. Um, getting all those wasps on my gloves I've been stung through the gloves before, and it, you just never know like which stinger is going to make it through. I did end up getting stung on my left wrist um, during this removal. I don't think you see it on camera, but um, yeah, it's always a little unnerving when you're sticking hand into a, an unforeseen hole um, into a very active and aggressive nest. Um, this particular species itself is not a very big swarming colony. Um, they don't latch on like southern yellow jackets. So you can kind of see they're a little bit more chill inside the nest um, until I actually reach in to grab them. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a good size. This is probably about 18 inches to 20 inches wide um, and about a foot tall. Yeah, and, and probably about four and a half inches uh, thick. Or, yeah, thick. Deep. Deep, that's a good word. They comb themselves their normal thickness. And I think there was about eight layers eight or nine layers and it couldn't really count them all because they went up into the behind the wall where I couldn't see I will be having an upcoming video that will be talking about 
the difference between males, queens, and workers, so you guys can kind of have a little bit more of a tuned-in eye to what you're looking at when you go back and watch my videos later after watching that particular video, and it'll give you um, a little bit of, better idea what to look for when you're identifying the, um, the different sexes and um, components of the colony. Stuck in my glove, stinging. I would mentioned that before, that they sting in my gloves, and then they get stuck, and then they disembowel themselves. And it's not because they have a barbed stinger, it's just because the goatskin leather um, is tight when they sting into it. They can't get their stingers back out without ripping their, their insides out. Some of them make it free, but actually the one I got stung by, there was no adult attached to it. It was literally just a stinger and the, the venom sack. So this is a good chunk of the comb that I got out here. Um, trying to get it out as much in one piece as I could, but again, when you're reaching out of the hole like that, it's really difficult to get it out in one piece. Look at all of them dead on my light. Stuck to my fingers. It's in the cavity. Mm -hmm. You've got it all. Nope, yep, there's more in there. Down there, there's probably another two times maybe. Let's see if we can get that out. Of course we'll get it out. Let's see if we can get it out in one piece. Now this just keeps going. I don't know what I'm feeling here. The creepiest part of the job is sticking your hand into a hole that you can't see. And I said shoot, not the other. Oh, there's four up there. Jesus. felt the vibration of those individuals on my hand and that is just it's enough to just give you a little bit of anxiety <laughs> because you just don't know what that buzzing means if you're about to get stung or not and there's a lot of males and queens in there holy cats and those are new males and queens they're not that there's multiple queens in this nest that were thriving in the nest. It was just that they had just hatched and were soon ready to start mating and leaving the colony to winter over for the next season to start their own their own uh, empire. So I pretty much got all the comb there. Just a little bit of envelope left. And obviously some adults. So just to vacuum those out. The moisture you're seeing in there is actually uh, rainwater. That's just envelope. So there was a leak inside that wall. Let's try to get some of the back up behind that uh, uh, wood siding. So that wasn't spray. There was no spray up inside of there when the comb was in there. Just 
All right, so usually just separating these things apart. I usually have the vacuum going, and I vacuum up as many of the workers as I can um, as I'm separating the cones. But for this one, um, I was actually wanting to release a lot of these males and queens since there were so many of them. I didn't want this nest, this colony, to just be off or not. Um, so I decided that I would release them. And uh, I know that I get a lot of flack in the in the comments that people don't quite understand that. You have to understand that that. Wasps in general are very beneficial creatures. They are great pollinators. They keep down the population of pest insects like flies, um, aphids, caterpillars that can decimate trees, um, other types of insects that can decimate crops. Bald-faced hornets attack Japanese beetles, which are known to, you know, kill grapevines and crops and various different things. These are extremely beneficial. The only time that they're pests are by location, as in. They're in somebody's house or around somebody's house. People are getting stung. People are allergic. That's when they're pests. Um, their stinging is solely to protect themselves and their colony. They don't just suss you out to attack you for no reason. Um, I see that a lot in the comments from people who don't really understand wasps. Um, so to, to relocate them is very beneficial to the ecosystem. And that's kind of what this channel is about, is educating people on wasps and to show their their beneficial side and not just hey let's destroy this colony just for the sake of destroying it um, I am paid to do this I'm hired by customers to go and remove nests from their house um, so this isn't just me just looking for them to hunt them down to kill them for the sake of a video um, the video is for educational purposes and um, so when I come out here and I show you guys these videos it's not to say hey look at me destroy a colony it's to say hey Here's what these creatures do. They're fascinating. They're awesome architects. And look at that queen there. You guys always ask for the queen. Well, there the she queen is. Queen. So to, just to show how important these things are, I'll be having a video coming up just showing um, the different aspects and avenues as to how they're beneficial in the ecosystem and what their role is and their part. So these nests were just packed with larvae and pupating adults and new adults and my chickens and squirrel and possums have still been eating and it's been three days since I, re since I removed this nest. So there's been a lot of uh, sustenance coming from this nest for other animals. So even though the nests are removed, they, they aren't destroyed in vain. They are... Um, fed to other creatures and their life force lives on in those creatures which is an aspect of my removal that I, I do brag about pretty good to my customers that um, yeah it's, it, I do have to kill them but um, at least the uh, at least nothing's wasted so unfortunately I didn't know that this sh camera was actually shooting in 1080p at 30 frames a second here which I was kind of bummed out about um, it wasn't in 4K. So there's like three or four different um, frame rates and aspect ratios and, uh, well not aspect ratios, resolution um, settings that I had these cameras set at, which I was kind of bummed about. Um, a word to the, uh, to the new, um, new videographers out there, check your settings before you shoot videos every time you shoot. Don't just assume that your settings are the way they were when you had the camera running the last time. So, <laughs> so just trying to brush off as many as I can down into the um, down into the bin because that bin's going to get dumped out and allow the uh, the new queens and males to be relocated into a woods. So those are queen cells, which queen cells carry new males and queens, so it's not just males, or not just queens. Um, you'll notice that their cells are a little bit bigger than the worker cells, and I do explain that in previous videos, so if you guys are curious about more of the queen and male stuff, check out some of my other videos and where I explain that. I can't tell you which because I explain that in a lot of different videos. I do try to point out in every video when I'm showing comb the differences between the male and or the um so 
these new queens and males are going to be released so they can potentially winter over somewhere and going out to the woods or a hedgerow if you want to refer to it as that in an area where they're not going to bother anybody And honestly, I didn't really need the bee suit on to do this um, this part of the process because they really weren't swarming me or trying to attack me. So this is the queen. Look how big she is. Robust. Short antenna. Males have slender, longer bodies, and their antenna are hooked almost like ram horns. That's the queen. She can't fly. Laid too many babies for that. Look at all that larva. Holy cats. That is a lot of larva. Especially for an end of season colony. Typically by this time of year they have a lot less larva inside them and then that's why the um, the yellow jackets you see them flying around fruiting bodies and um, you know like decaying matter and trash cans and stuff because they're looking for more food because they're not getting fed from the colony. So the fact that this one still had a lot of larva in it, the adults were still being fed. The larva regurgitate a fluid that feeds the adults, and the adults feed the larva um, uh, hunted flies, aphids, caterpillars, those types of things. So this is the catch from the vacuum from actually um, sucking them up at the customer's house. And what I do with the bucket matter is I go out and dump it at the hedgerow. So it's just a little bit of Dawn dish soap inside there, just a few drops. It's not it's not anything uh, that's going to be toxic to the plant matter out here. But the uh, the dead bodies and the uh, paper envelope and things will get a uh, will decompose and pretty much compost back into the topsoil. There's Amber. <coughs> Get blown away in the wind. Oh, it's squirrely squirrel. Here's Humphrey, everyone. Me, 
This is why he's a wild squirrel. There's nothing tame or domestic about this squirrel. Yeah, we. Nibbling my ear. Yeah, we. Hey, squirrel, squirrel. Hey, squirrel, squirrel. Such a spaz. <laughs> Can I help you? He hid that nut over there. <laughs> Luckily, this is my unfinished music room. This is why he's a wild animal. Remember that bond that everybody claims that he's going to have with me and he can't live without me and all that BS? Trust me, he's just as much afraid of me when I first come in here as a wild squirrel is of a random person. There's no risk about him finding some person and running up their leg and getting killed because he doesn't even do that to me. Enjoy your nut, Humphrey. All right, so this is some slowed down shots of uh, my girl, Ginger, eating up some of this nest. Um, I did a slow motion video of slow motion catcher and super slow motion in my last video of a hornet's nest. And I decided that I was going to get some shots of the chickens eating the comb because how cool is it to watch a raptor at work um, up close and personal? So um, I want to get some really uh, close-up, vivid, detailed shots of Ginger or one of the other chickens eating some comb and, uh, well, cutting into some comb and getting some larva and pupating adults. Um, so I'm actually going to leave you guys to check this out. This is, you know, a decent amount of videos, probably four minutes or so um, of her going at it. And... Um, but I want you guys to just see the, how her mouth parts work to actually get these, uh, to get this comb torn apart. So she actually pecks, she pecks the uh, larva out, and she kind of stabs the larva with her tongue, and then eats the, like right there, and then she actually will then move her head forward with her mouth open and consume that larva. But her, you can see her tongue move forward between her beaks and peck, like poke into the larva. And then when she opens her mouth, she pulls her tongue in. And then that like speared larva gets pulled into her mouth. Really cool to watch. I'll let you guys check this out um, unadulterated by my voiceover. So you guys can enjoy.
All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have any ideas for any future videos you guys like to see, also drop in the comments and let me know. I have this car just about completely torn down for the casting video that I'm going to be doing. I got the engine pretty much done. I got a lot of aluminum, which is freaking awesome. So once I get this thing completely torn down, um, I'll be melting it down the aluminum and doing a cast video uh, for you guys who would like to see a comb casted into aluminum, which I'm pretty excited for because nobody's doing that on YouTube. Um, so the car will be torn down here probably the next week or so. I'm getting great time-lapse footage of it. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. If you guys are returning subscribers, thanks so much for tuning in to check out my videos and, and uh, supporting my content. If you're new subscribers, thanks so much for tuning in to check out these videos and I'll catch you guys on the next one.